Yes, you're listening to Instant Mash 1 till 3 with me and for today, John James and my sister Heather. Oh God. Double trouble. <laughs> well, <laughs> we've been talking throughout uh, the last selection of tunes and uh, I've got uh, I've got some stories to share with you. These are very Tell me, Uncle Bagley. Uh, these are very <laughs> peculiar, not normal events that have happened uh, in, uh, in 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 the UK over okay. the last few years. Sure. So what do you make of this? Margaret Bell, who kept bees in uh, in you know her, her home or around her home, about seven miles from her home in Ludlow, in Shropshire, England, died in 1994. Soon after her funeral, mourners were amazed to see hundreds of bees settle on the corner of the street opposite the house where she had lived for 26 years. The bees stayed for about an hour before buzzing off over the rooftops. Oh, unbelievable. The local press ran a photograph of the bees hanging on the wall in a cluster. Have you got that photograph? Even if I did, it wouldn't really translate on the radio. No, but you can tweet it but later. But if we can I'm find it, in... we'll tweet yeah. it later. By any, by oh, any wow. chance, were, were there a lot of flowers at the house following the funeral? <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. That's a really good thought, yeah. Are, are you a detective, John? I am, yes. It you know. sorts. I found the, uh, the body was buzzing. Boom! Oh, nobody got it. So, uh, Are these t- buzzing? Oh, come on! <laughs> Throw me a bone here. Oh, oh no, we, we got it. We got it. <laughs> So uh, you, you keep a, 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 an interesting pet, don't you, John? I do. I keep a, I keep a racing pigeon. Well, not not like I didn't buy one. It just sort of turned up one day and adopted me. So it's put me in a very <laughs> nice cage. It feeds me, you know, every once in a while, and it lets me out to do instant mash. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> any any chance that uh, said homing pigeon or racing pigeon, you think, will mourn you after your passing? Uh, I don't think so. It'll probably just uh, peck at my remains, I, I hope, to feed itself. Oh, no. Oh, that's, sad. <laughs> that's a little grim. How about this, then? <laughs> what do you make of this story? On, the seven, on December the 11th, 2002, two motorists called police to report seeing a car veering off the A3 trunk road with headlights blazing in Surrey. A thorough search uncovered a car concealed in dense undergrowth and the long dead driver nearby. It turned out that the crash had actually happened five months earlier when the driver, Christopher Chandler, had been reported missing by his brother. Ooh, and these two motorists were separate so on separate occasions? You don't know, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> People saw a crash, and when they went Ooh. to investigate, the crash had happened actually five months earlier. Well, to be fair, it's pretty obvious that it had to be something paranormal because you did say the headlights were blazing. So if there were fire shooting out of the headlight, that's got to be a big hint <laughs> that, you know, something paranormal is definitely taking place and is potentially dangerous. You'd hope that they would make note of all these kind of details for the police yeah, report. Definitely. So lots of not normal things going on there. Okay. As always on Instant Mash. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll, uh, we'll have one more and we'll go to a couple more tunes. What do you make of this then? Laura Buxton released a helium filled balloon during celebrations for her grandparents' gold wedding anniversary in, in Blurton, Staffordshire in June 2001. Attached to the balloon was her name and address and a note asking the finder to write back. Ten days later she received a reply. The balloon had been found 140 miles away by another Laura Buxton. No! Both Lauras were aged ten, both had three-year-old black Labradors, a guinea pig and a rabbit. It was a helium balloon. Right, okay, the name, the name I could kind of think, that's unusual but it happened, but they all had the same pets, the same age, that's mad. Mm. Pretty crazy. Yeah, she said afterwards, This is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to celebrate the sudden decline in conversation, we're going to have a bit of Kate Bush with running up that hill. <laughs> you a fan of Kate Bush, John? I don't know where to go with that that I can actually reproduce on air. <laughs> Let's take that as a yes then. This is Kate Bush running up that hill. The time is just coming up to 20 to 2. It's Instant Mash. You're listening to Instant Mash with Warren and Christian, Saturday 1 till 3 p.m. on Radio Cardiff. It's Instant Mash. Reach out, touch face. This one goes out to Gez if he's listening. Playing why, John? Um, basically because uh, we stripped off to this in a rather embarrassing fashion. More on that next. (laughs) 
You're listening to Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. With me today are John and Heather. Hello. 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 <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> so we're going to continue with our uh, interesting little stories, just to see oh. what uh, what you make yeah, of them. Yeah, those Excellent. ones before were great. And if you have anything to add, anything to tweet, then do uh, do get in touch. You can tweet the show at Instant Mash RC or text in on 07728758759. Right, let's see what you make of this then. We, uh, we were chatting last week, actually, before I read the story, we were chatting last week about the potential of putting two small headphones up a person's nose yes, we were. and being able to amplify the sound through their mouth. We thought this was a myth. We tried it earlier on today, and, and there is some truth to that. <laughs> I think we, we could discovered... Could it just be with Heather's mouth, though? Because we haven't, we haven't <laughs> showcased it with other people's mouths, so it could just be the extra ampl- amplification of Heather's it mouth. It might just be me. It might be I'm a freak of nature. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. I mean, we need to do some further testing, I it's think. Not it's, what... the, it's the base box she's had installed in there. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, this, is the, this next story is on a, along a similar vein. Be the judge. A noise, a bit like amplifier feedback, had been heard for three years coming from the right ear of a Welsh pony called Misty, according to the veterinary record in 1995. Go on, playing what kind of Just a noise, just just an ambient kind of static feedbacky noise. It varied in intensity but stayed at a constant pitch of 7 kHz. Hearing a buzz in one's ear is called subjective tinnitus. Much rarer is when other people can also hear the noise. This is called objective tinnitus, and the cause is still largely a matter of debate. Oh, what a poor pony, though. I feel sad for the horse. I feel sorry for the dwarf that's stuck in his ear playing that sound continuously. It's oh, I'm knackered. <laughs> How does that happen? A noise continuously emanating from the ear of a pony. That is weird, yeah. Does it happen to other animals, or is it exclusively horses? (laughs) (laughs) Tinnitus can certainly happen to anyone. I've never heard of objective tinnitus, where sound is actually played from your eardrum. We'll have to find out if that can happen to humans as well. We, we will. So uh, after now that we've done the test of sticking microphones up your nose or headphones up your nose to, to test the amplification of your skull, now oh. perhaps we can try and get sounds to play out of your ears. Yeah, if anyone's listening who has sounds that come out of their ears, do get in touch. That would be amazing. Unless <clears> they're <throat> rude and then we can't air them. Right. The next story. A nine-year-old Chinese girl was playing in July 1992. So far, playing okay. a game, so, just playing, not an instrument. I'm thinking, She's where just are playing. we here? <laughs> with her hands, you know, outside. Yeah. So far, so good. When suddenly she was carried off by a whirlwind and deposit- deposited unhurt in a treetop almost two miles away. According to a wire report from May 1986, a freak wind lifted up to 13 children in the oasis of Hami, strange use of the word oasis, in western China and deposited them unharmed in sand dunes 12 miles away. Did she find some red sparkly shoes to get home? We, you think? That is the best excuse I've ever heard to a parent for getting stuck up a tree. (laughs) (laughs) But mum, I was carried here by a whirlwind. I had no choice in the matter. (laughs) Unbelievable. Maybe that story could actually help her help explain this next one. In April 1997, a turkey hunter... (laughs) Oh, you know it's going to be good. A turkey hunter in Yellowstone State Forest, Indiana, came upon a huge sandstone boulder wedged between three branches of an oak tree, about 35 feet from the ground. The arrow-shaped rock... I can't even picture that. The arrow-shaped rock was estimated to weigh 500 pounds. Subsequently, four more large boulders were found weighted high up in the trees elsewhere in the forest. All were in remote areas, none of the trees were damaged and there were no signs of heavy equipment being used or tornado damage and no one recalled any mishaps involving dynamite anywhere nearby. Giants. Giants. Could be giants. It must be. Yeah, robots. Never trust a turkey hunter, that's what I say. No, it's the, it's the second most dangerous type of hunting in the world, did you know? Is, Tur- it, turkey is, hunting. is, quite is that because they use machine guns? No, it's because they'll gobble you. <laughs> <laughs> is he oh, quite a, a, a tall turkey hunter? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> Why are you obsessed with turkey hunters? Is that where this is going? No, I'm thinking along the lines of giants and not trusting turkey hunters. I didn't even know you could maybe, be a turkey hunter. Maybe it was a giant turkey. Maybe, you know... Like a, something like the steak puff marshmallow man, but in turkey form. I think I that think 
Mr. Bernard Matthews has sort of eliminated the need to hunt wild turkeys, surely. Bernard Matthews would be very excited by a giant turkey. Can you we, imagine how much money you could make off that? We're we are really... We're twisting the story here, right? There were no giant turkeys in Yellowstone, all right? So let's, let's just stay to the facts, right? We're talking about boulders in trees. OK. Anyway, before this story gets wildly out of hand... One more for you. Gloria Ramirez, 31, died of kidney failure at Riverside General Hospital in California in 1994. Tragic, but so far, pretty normal. Mm -hmm. After being rushed there with chest complaints. Emergency room staff were felled by fumes when a blood sample was taken. A strange oily sheen on the woman's skin and unexplained white crystals in her blood were reported. A doctor suffered liver and lung damage and bone necrosis. At least 23 other people were affected. One hypothesis was that Ramirez, who had cervical cancer, had taken a cocktail of medicines that combined to make an insecticide, but tests yielded no clue. Ooh. Bit OCD on the bleach, then. Well, <laughs> yes, that yeah. would explain everything. Yeah. <laughs> but so those fumes, that um, concoction that she'd taken or, or whatever, was that the cause of her death? Well, well no, it's, it's probably the cancer. Perhaps. You know, it could well be a contributing factor. Uh, who knows? Mm. Either way, Ooh. taking a routine blood sample from a patient with chest com- chest pains shouldn't drop all your hospital staff. So the, the wow. only safe thing to do is never to take a blood sample from somebody ever again? I think that's perfectly sound knowledge. Glad we sorted that. So, <clears throat> on, that, uh, on that note, let's go straight to another tune. I'm thinking a bit of Fleetwood Mac. What do you, what do you feel? Sounds good. Don't stop. Hit me with it. saves your life. <laughs> so what was that? That was massive horse. <laughs> John, quick fact. How long does it take to hard boil an ostrich egg? I have no idea. It takes four hours to hard boil an ostrich egg. I'm still waiting for the punchline. Instant mash. Well, as everyone knows, I'm a huge wrestling fan. So this is uh, for all you CM Punk fans out there. It's living colour, cult of personality, and it's clobbering time! Instant Mash! You're listening to Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. We had to get our rock chops on for a second there, just to appease the mighty Jonathan James. I keep breaking the radio station. I think that might have been the heaviest song we've played on Instant Match. Thank you very much. I take a bow. (laughs) Well well done. So, another quick fact for you. Go for it. How much does the sun shrink by every second? God, how? In what? uh, In in uh, feet. In feet, right. um... Half the width times two. No, no, I don't work. I think, I think <laughs> five feet. You're exactly right. No the sun, way. Yes. The oh, sun yes. shrinks by five feet every second. No way. That's my height. The sun shrinks by me every second. Yeah, because it's all about you, one, Heather. Actually. Again, it's all about you. <laughs> Yeah, so next time uh, Heather has any doubt that the world revolves around her, she can use that little fact she as just, an explanation. She just revolves around the surface of the sun, slowly getting more crispy as time goes on. <laughs> This is yet to be proven. <laughs> so, uh, what have you seen on TV recently, John? Well, I've been. Um, I actually got round to watching Gogglebox because uh, everyone's been going on about it. So, for those of you who don't know what it is, basically, I'm watching people watching the TV, and I was sat there. I was feeling right. a little bit dirty because, you know, 
have we really fallen to these kind of lenses? Like, what's it going to be next? Are we going to have, like, cameras set up in everybody's house? And what will happen is, you'll do your day, you come home, and then you'll watch the extended highlights of what you actually did during that day. It's like... I'd watch oh, that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, these I just... people are... Uh consenting to there being TV cameras in their house though, right? <laughs> but, but, but people are saying that some of the people on there should have their own show. And I'm like, doing what? Doing what they watch? Television. I don't think they juggle I... or anything like that. You know? No, I, I saw, I've seen like half an episode and yeah, they're just sat on the television. Sat on, sat on the television. Yeah, they're sat, sat on, the on their couches, watching the television, talking about, I don't know, X Factor, the news, whatever's on. It's brilliant. You get, you get to watch people talk about shows that you don't want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, which they you could do in the comfort. For you. Uh, you guys could have come over my house. I could have filmed it and watched it back, and it would be exactly the same. I so don't these, get it. Are these special or, or interesting people in any way? I mean, well, what, how do you get to be on Gogglebots? Well, how do you get the privilege of having somebody film you watching television? Well, it just seems to be sort of like let, let's see how many um, stereotypes can we whack into uh, into different rooms. So, so, so you've got posh people. You've got, you've got you've got northern people. They go people. from all over different um, parts of the UK, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know the odd, the odd person with a you know with a Polish accent or something, just so they can have a little bit of a giggle at the way he says stuff, and it's just like, oh, this is so mm. terrible. Like, you know, no. It's an absolute winner. It is. <laughs> I just can't imagine the meeting, you know, when you, you actually have to pitch these programs, obviously, to get funding, to, yeah. to, you need to be able to go and present some kind of description of your show. Can you so, imagine what they said yeah. when the guy came and said, right, we're going to do a program where we're watching people, watching other people's programs. What do you think? And yeah. they, probably, they probably went something along the lines of, oh, that sounds terrible. How much would it cost? About 50 quid. Okay, we'll stick it on there. That's brilliant. <laughs> How are we going to best Big Brother? We basically put a load of people in a house and watch them every hour of every day. How can we beat that? That seems to do quite well. We need something else now. Yeah. Let's have people watching television. Uh, uh, they'll have they'll have the uh, the cameras in the prison cells. It's like we can't you know we can't keep the big Big Brother contestants locked in for more than three months. So we'll just stick them in a prison where they're locked in for 15 years. You know, and, and it's just exploitational garbage. That's having said that, though, day. having said that, thanks, I've well done that. John's rant of the day. <laughs> <laughs> having said that, it's amazing what people will pay for entertainment. You recently just found out that the most expensive computer game, am I right? Yes, just uh, just was put on eBay for half a million quid. Because, half a million pounds for a computer game. There's uh, there's one copy of it. It's called Gamma Attack, and. Uh, yeah, I know it hasn't actually sold on eBay yet. To be fair for it, but there oh. was a game that sold recently for forty-one thousand pounds. Oh please! Um, seriously, seriously. Who has that kind of money to spend on a computer game? Well, and what? More importantly, what's involved in that computer game? It well, must be amazing. Well, you'd think that, but uh, one of the second most expensive video game actually is uh, an Atari game, which involves you blowing out candles. So. Uh, Perhaps they can do that on Gogglebox. Do your wishes week. come true? <laughs> <laughs> they have to. For, for that, that amount kind of money, of money. Yeah. it definitely should. Unbelievable. Anyway, uh, we're going to go. Uh, we've got 10 minutes left of the show, guys. 10 minutes till 3 wow. p.m. You're listening to uh, Radio Cardiff. This is the Instant Mash Show. And uh, I think we, we've had a bit of rock now. We, we've got the rock flushed out of our system. Let's have a little bit of. Uh, let's have a bit of Prince, shall we? Do you know Alphabet Street? Uh, how's it spelled? I, I don't actually. I don't know this. Song, well, you so will after this. It's going to be a surprise. Instant mash. Ah, on the radio, Cardiff. Instant mash every Saturday, one till three. Instant mash. No. You know this one? You must know this one. I don't know it. Listen to it. You've been listening to Instant Mash here on Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. We've come to the end of Instant Mash, guys. Oh, it's been such a lovely day. <laughs> it has That's been a lovely awful. day. I hear the rains have just swept Cheesy in. Yes, it is. It's looking quite rainy out the window. 
Never gonna, mind. I'm going to leave anyway because security are about to throw me out. <laughs> you asked, yes. Well, you, you have been uh, special on the show today. <laughs> Thank you for your song choices, your company, your conversation. Thank you to Heather. You've been wonderful once again. Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, do tune in next week. Uh, Instant Mash will be back with you next Saturday, 1 till 3 p.m. We might even have Christian back with us by that time. Ooh. But keep listening to Radio Cardiff 98.7 FM. We've got the sports show coming up now. And I'll leave you with this. As usual, uh, on uh, Instant Mash, we like to finish with this little jingle. It's instant mash.